guys welcome to my channel I am getting ready to unbox a new this will be my third paint by number kit and this is one that I got for Christmas and I absolutely love eagles so I'm excited to get started on this one and see what it looks like inside so the kit that I did that I just finished actually a few days ago so what day is today today is the 3rd of January 2020 and I finished my other kit on the 1st of January a couple days ago and I took a couple of days off and now I'm getting ready to dive into this one here and it is what is it called let me find the name of it here it's called Eagle Hunter and it is by Dimensions Paintworks so I'm going to open it up and take a look at the paints and see what the canvas looks like In case you haven't done one of these before, I like how uh, the, ba the back side has um, some instructions on how to mix the paints and basically some tips and tricks on doing some dry brushing techniques because um, sometimes you have to blend the colors or add some different effects and so the back box explains a little bit on how to do that. Let me move this out of the way before I cut myself. Okay, so let's open up the paints first and see what they look like. Okay, those look like some, some of the colors I would expect to see for this kit. Okay, so you got some greens, blues, browns. And... Alright, so those are the three colors. And I forgot to mention in my last paint by number kit that I got from Dimensions that I had plenty of paint. I wasn't in at risk of running out of any of it, so I do like that, and I feel like I can be a little bit more generous with this kit since I realized I did have quite a bit left over on that. So, um, yeah. And um, nothing much to say about that. Let me open one of them up and see how it looks. And I do like how these snap apart like that. It's a nice quality. Let me open one of these up. And the paints look nice, just like they did in my last kit. None of them were dried out. I did notice, though, that this little marking on here, since that's where you hold it to open up the kits and close them, that those numbers wore off. So one thing I will do when I, before I get started is I'm going to take that number and write it with a Sharpie on the bottom of each of these because I, that did get completely worn off on my last kit. So those look nice. As with the other one, it comes with a reference chart because there are some areas on the canvas that don't have a number because it's too tiny, so you need to look at the reference chart. And it also shows uh, basically the key here to what the letters re reference as to which colors you need to mix together. One thing I noticed right off the bat is the dotted lines in the, in the chart here, and that um, means that basically you want to blend the colors um, into each other to give it sort of a softened look. Okay, and next uh, I did notice in the last kit that I opened by Dimensions that my canvas was warped, and this one looks to be a bit sort of warped in the same way, not quite as bad. Um, you can kind of see, I'm trying to hold it on the edge, yeah, you, can't, you can't really tell, but it, as you can see it doesn't really lay completely flat, it's got a little bit of a kind of a wobble to it, you can see there, but it's not that big of an issue because in the end it's going to be framed anyway, so um, not, not, uh, not to be too worried about that. The brush, as in the last kit, is on the back. I loved the brush that came with this last time as far as the tip. Did not like the handle because I thought it was too thin. I don't like the fact that they tape it on the back because it always leaves a mark. But let me see if we can see this tip. I don't know if I'm out of focus or not, but you can see the tip on this is nice and pointy, and I like it. Okay, well, stay tuned, and you can watch me paint. I'm going to have a mixture of me chatting a bit about it, and also some time lapse. Thanks for joining me today as I get started on my new painting, and 
Uh, you just saw the unboxing of it, so you know which one we're doing, but just as a refresher, it is called Eagle Hunter by Dimensions Paintworks. And I'm going to get started. It is Sunday, January 5th, and this is my last day of my Christmas staycation. So, uh, yeah, it's back to reality again tomorrow, so I don't know how much painting time I'm going to get done. I think I'm going to do is these shaded areas, um, the darker shaded areas and these lighter shaded areas because it's kind of a no-brainer to get started with this. Uh, the darker color is going to be number 14. And, oh, that's not right. I don't think he has blue in his head. I think I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, let me look at the chart real quick. You know, for some odd reason, he does have blue on his head. Oh, yes, you can see some of the reflection of the sky on. So yes, he does have some blue on his head. So these two colors I'm going to get started with today are filling in the dark shaded areas with that and the light gray areas. There's very few of those. And I'm just going to do some painting. There's not a whole lot to say. First thing I need to do, like I had mentioned, is I'm going to write the number on the bottom here because, like I said, those get worn off. So I want to be able to remember Let's kind of see while I'm at it. I'll do the number six. This is me checking in to show you what I got done yesterday. I actually filmed some time lapse, but it was out of focus the whole time, so I pitched it. And it was just this gray area here anyway, so it wasn't anything too exciting. That um, also appeared in a couple of other tiny little areas down here too. And that's all I had gotten done yesterday. Today, I'm once again not going to have a lot of time to paint, but when I do, I think I'm going to work on the sky where there's just numbers not letters because I don't have time to do any mixing today so I think I'll work on 16 and 2. Okay it's going to be those two colors right there very light so it's basically going to be working on this part of the sky right there. I was going to mention too this area here it doesn't have a symbol on it and that's what I like about these dimensions kits is that they uh, wherever there's white they do not have uh, they don't have a symbol on the canvas, so you don't have to worry about the white having to cover it. Oh, and one thing, since I am doing light colors, I need to remember um, to cover these numbers. I wanted to try, I don't have a, um, a gel pen. Thank you, Joanne, for that tip. I do have a white colored pencil, though, so let me go grab one, and I'm going to try covering that number two with a, with a white colored pencil and see if that helps the paint cover it a little bit better. Okay, seems all my pencil sharpeners have come up missing, but I think we have enough of a tip here to cover that, and it's not actually really drawing on this at all. Hmm. Okay, well that's not really working, because it seems like this has kind of a almost a waxy coating on it, so um, it's not even working on there, so okay, we'll scrap that plan for now. Um, I'll have to look into getting myself a gel pin and see if that works. So. For now, we'll just have to put on extra coats. Okay, so let's start with number, let's see, should we start with number two or number 16? Let's start with number two. I can tell this is gonna need a little bit of water mixed in with it. Um, let's try stirring it with a toothpick first. I made a mistake. Look at that, guys. I already started in number 16 instead of number 2. 
so far I've made three mistakes on this painting. Not paying attention, but um, so number 16 is this color, which is very close, so that's not going to be any issue at all. This will just cover right over top of that when it dries. Okay, I've only had a half a cup of coffee, so that's what I'm, I'm going to blame it on that. Good morning! Uh, here is my progress so far. I did not film a clip yesterday. Um, has it been two days? It's January 9th. I can't remember if I filmed. I think I just skipped yesterday. As you can see, I made some progress on the sky. I've got some of these large areas painted. I thought I would come in here and talk to you a bit about uh, this area in the sky because maybe in case you're like me and you never sort of blended colors together, um, now, I did a dry brushing technique, but I wasn't quite still sure how they were, how they wanted me to do it. So this is definitely the most challenging part of this whole piece is trying to figure out how to do that nice soft blend to make it look like mist. A good brush to use for doing a dry brushing technique is, is a kind of a flatter, wider one because it just gives you kind of a nicer, you don't have these definite br brush strokes from this is the one that came with the kit and this didn't. I did have one of these on hand. I don't know, this one might be too big. I also have a couple other ones that um, might work. I've got sort of this tapered flat one. I mean, you know, I'm not a painter, guys. I, this is, this is, I'm, I'm charting new waters here with this, so I'm just, thought I would share how I'm kind of learning about how this goes because um, I first found myself kind of stressed out thinking, oh gosh, I'm going to mess this painting up, but you know what? I'm going to now kind of think of this as my practice piece to learn how to do some blending. Let's start with... Uh, I don't want to put too much, but I just want to start with kind of putting some paint down along that line to soften it. And because it dries quick, you kind of have to get at it here pretty quick. So let's... Good morning, it's January 12th and I'm popping in here for an update. As you can see, I've gotten quite a bit done since the last clip. So I had showed you that I was working on the sky and this area and you'll have just seen a clip of me um, blending this area. And then yesterday I worked over in this area here finished doing more colors in the sky. The sky was not easy to do. It actually took a lot of tweaking and I kept going back and adding more and I'm still not 100% sure it's done, but I'm gonna leave the sky alone until I get the rest of it done and then see how it looks at the end and if I have to tweak any areas. Oh yes, and then yesterday afternoon I did this little area, which I think turned out really nice.
wanted to interject here for a minute and just say, if you notice that the water goes in the painting, if you're looking at it, it goes horizontal, basically left to right, but I'm painting it in a sorry, sort of oriented so that I'm painting it in a vertical motion. And I'm probably creating some bad painting habits by doing that, but I don't know why for some reason I find it's easier to do these like these long narrow lines when I can pull them toward me as such and then change the brush and, and push away from me this way like that. So if you're wondering why I have the painting turned in that orientation, that's why. I just find it's easier. Okay, back to painting. It is January 18th and um, a few days have gone by. I didn't do a whole lot of painting this week. I mean, well, it looks like I did a lot of painting, but I, I did most of it in just maybe two or three painting sessions. I actually did a lot late last night. <laughs> so I didn't do any filming because the lighting wasn't good. And um, I just wanted to show you how this is looking. I love it. It's really starting to take shape. So I'm excited about this. And I, as you can see, I don't have too much more to go. I'm hoping to finish it up this weekend. It's a three-day weekend. Did I say it was January 18th? So yes, it's um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday on Monday. So three-day weekend. And I'm guessing I'll get this done. So uh, I was going to save the eagle for last. But, you know, when I do a color or a blend and it shows up up in the eagle. I've just been putting it up there. I think I might have said that already. And so his face, look at his face, is coming together. Oh my gosh, such a gorgeous bird. Just a few more colors to do in the face. And this morning, I don't feel like mixing any colors because I just don't. <laughs> so I'm going to do all of the numbers that are left. So it looks like there's some 9, 10s, and 11s left. And then after that, the rest are going to just be some letters that I have to do and... Um, finish it up and I'm probably going to go over because this I really noticed last night because I I didn't have um, natural lighting and I was using artificial lighting to paint and boy you could really see the mistakes when, you, when you're under artificial light and it's you know, it's really bright like that and it really makes all of the numbers show through so I don't know I'm gonna really gonna have to think about if I'm gonna spend time to go over and recover I mean even though I put a couple of coats I mean if you look close well not so much there but like yeah like see how you can see the d i mean it like i said it doesn't look as bad in natural lighting but when i had the the artificial light on it's like you could see the numbers it was really bringing out the numbers in in all these areas that i covered so i don't know you know i'll, I'll decide i might just be ready to move on to the next painting after that okay well i'm gonna do some painting and maybe i'll do a little bit of time lapse too for you guys
before I finish this painting, I wanted to show you guys what I bought last night. I stopped by Michael's to try to look for something to um, cover these numbers so that they don't show through on the lighter colors. And unfortunately, I've already done all the light colors on this painting, so I won't be able to try it on this one, but I did want to see how they write on the canvas. So I bought two different things. Uh, I went and got some white uh, gel, these jelly roll pens. Uh, thanks to my friend Stitching Joanne uh, for recommending to try the, the gel pins. And then while I was looking at that, I found this, which actually it's this. It's a Sharpie water-based, basically a paint marker. Um, the only problem with this is that it's got this really fat tip on it. So I'm a little nervous of, and it seems to put down, you know, like a lot of paint. Let's see, like right here. I mean, it, it just, I don't know, that might work, but it, see how it kind of drips a lot? So, I mean, I, it might just put too much paint down. Um, so, like I said, I'll experiment with that on my next painting. But I thought I would try this Jelly Roll pin on here because it doesn't lay down quite as much. You can kind of see it does a little bit, so I don't know. Let's try that. Trying to see what I'm doing from the camera. Side. Yeah, see that covers really nicely. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna paint over it. But like I said, I'm doing a dark color, so it's gonna be hard to tell how it covers, but I would imagine that that's gonna work really nicely for my next painting. So I'll let that dry for a minute. Okay, so the part I put the jelly roll on is right there. I went ahead and painted all the other areas around it while I was letting that dry because my paint was starting to dry in my little palette over here. So it is now dry. I can touch it. And I'm just going to try painting. Like I said, I wish I would have tried this with a lighter color so I could see if it actually... I mean, I can, can't imagine that it won't work perfectly for that, so... Thank you for that tip, Joanne. I appreciate it. Can't wait to try that on my next painting. So, so yes, that's one thing I was wondering about is it seems like, because it's water-based, they had a, oh no, that's no, that, never mind, I'm thinking of something else. You kind of have to be careful painting over it though, because it seems like it does want to grab that white and mix it in, so I probably would recommend just dabbing over it as opposed to painting. Maybe I didn't let it dry long enough. Oop, yeah, so you can kind of see it lifting the paint there. So I'm probably going to let that dry and then go over it again one more time, just sort of dabbing on it. All right, it's dried a little bit. So I'm just going to dab on top of that. And as soon as that dries, it'll blend in with the others nicely. And I think that's going to work out really well. So excited to try that on my next painting. Okay, I'm going to finish this up and um, be done. Here it is guys, it is all done. I have completed it and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a close-up tour of it so you can see.
how nice it looks. I think it turned out so beautiful. I'm very happy with it. I still feel like I could have done a little bit better here, but I'm okay with it. I figured that on my next one I'll work on it a little bit better, that blending technique, and I'll get better as I go. But right now, it's kind of it's documenting my journey. So I'm going to leave it be. I love this. I, um, I love it so much that if Dimensions made a cross stitch pattern out of this same thing, I'd probably stitch it. All right. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do have another one I'm getting ready to start. Um, I might only film a time lapse of it, though. I uh, haven't decided, but let's just zoom in one more time on this gorgeous eagle's face.